The Nintendo 64, a classic among video game consoles, one of the first to truly showcase the power of 3D gaming. I mean, just look at Mario 64. Such high quality graphics! I make fun of Mario 64, but wait until I tell you what my favourite game of all time is. Obviously, needing to reach out to a wider market, Nintendo decided to branch out and see what countries they could release their current console in. Yep, I said current. You see, today we're talking about the IQ player. Nintendo and IQ's answer to the Nintendo 64 in China. But the N64 came out in 1996. Uh, but the IQ player came out in China in 2003. But why did it take that long to release in the country? We see, the thing is, China has a very black market sort of etiquette when it comes to video games. If you want your game to be released in China, well, I can wish you as good luck even getting it thought about. It didn't help that in 2000, home consoles were straight up banned in China, so many people were led to piracy through copied cartridges or downloaded ROMs online. What did I do? You know it's illegal download copyrighted music. I'm taking you in. <laughs> Nintendo saw these two situations and wanted to get around both of them. Nintendo, breaking laws and stopping piracy since 1889. So Nintendo joined up with a guy called Wei Yen, trying discipline not to butcher that name, to create said IQ player for Chinese players. And on the 17th of November 2003, the IQ player was released into shops throughout China. At this point, you're probably confused as to how they managed to release the console. Well, Nintendo's marketing strategy was to market their games by saying that video games can help children improve their social development. And they got away with it. Too bad it flopped terribly. Yeah, as it turns out, the IQ player was quite literally the opposite of a success. They ended up selling around 10,000 units. So all that hard work for nothing, I suppose. <laughs> Into the trash. Though later on in 2009, Nintendo created IQ at Home, which was basically just a Chinese system to download Nintendo's games online. Though, as you can imagine, it wasn't exactly a hit and eventually discontinued in 2016. Uh, not a big loss or deal there. But yeah, uh, that's how it was created. But what was it like? Well, this is the controller. Yeah, it's nothing special, but people make bank on the console on eBay. It's crazy, $400 for this, and I'd say that's reasonable. The console only released with a few titles. Seriously, this thing only churned out 14 Chinese ports of otherwise Nintendo 64 games. Those titles being these. Sure, maybe 14 games would be a lot to own and play through, but the N64 released 393 games. You can tell Nintendo didn't really care that much. It's not like they released at launch. All 14 of these games were released over a span of almost three years. Okay, enough ranting about the game selection. In terms of reception, again, the console flopped incredibly, and not a lot of reviews would be given out to something that virtually no one cared about. I mean, they had a market of 800 million people at the time. Selling just 10,000 is kind of embarrassing, especially for a big company like Nintendo. Anyway, I think that'll do me today. I've now filled up my quota jar for ranting about Nintendo. Yeah, I know you're there. So I hope you enjoyed this video, and I will see you later. Uh, bye bye